I'm only talking to Alan Bedenko. How are you, Mr. Nice Cambria, you. over there? Um, well, uh, obviously, Mr. Pigeon has entered a plea of not guilty to all the charges. He vehemently denies any wrongdoing. We're looking forward to our day in court. Uh, obviously, the uh, statements made by the prosecution are their opinion. A grand jury is a one-sided event. Uh, we're not allowed to cross-examine witnesses or to bring witnesses in. And so it's just an accusation. And uh, we'll deal with it in court. Can you elaborate on the deal that was offered? No, well, a a each, I think every single person is always offered the opportunity to plead to something. And there was such an offer made, uh, but obviously that was turned down. It wasn't even considered seriously. Potentially, uh, how much could Judge Michael X plea deal affect this case going forward? Well, it remains to be seen. There's, a, there's an awful lot that needs to be developed uh, for a trial jury. Uh, it's not something that, you know, in two sentences you can explain. Uh, there are a number of communications here. Uh, we intend to go through them. Uh, the ethics rules prevent lawyers from making statements that may affect the outcome of cases. Uh, only to the exception of responding to statements that are made. So today, some statements were made in the court uh, with regard to bail. I uh, made my statements, uh, which uh, counter those in my opinion, but other than that, uh, ethically, we're not allowed to comment right. on things that may affect the trial. Prosecution used the word extortion. Well, that's the charge. That, that was just the charge. Uh, and of course, that's their accusation, but uh, you know, he's uh, denied it. Uh, he's presumed innocent. We haven't had a trial. Don't jump to conclusions. I think all of you are, are now veterans enough to know you shouldn't jump to conclusions on cases that people think are strong and they turn out not to be. Given Mr. Pigeon's position in this community, uh, do you have any inkling that this is politically motivated? <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm not a mudslinger uh, and I'm not going to walk down that road. Um, I think that uh, the community will make its own judgment as to whether or not politics are involved uh, in this case uh, once all the evidence comes in uh, the courtroom. So we'll wait for that. Can you give us a timeline? Where do we go from here? What should we expect next? Well, understand that uh, the standard motion time is 45 days. You heard the judge uh, give us uh, basically an argument date in September. Uh, we have other obligations, the judge has other obligations, I have other trials and so on. So my guess is we're talking uh, uh, 2017, probably in the spring, uh, before uh, we could get to a trial. Uh, that's my best guess. With the Mr. Did Mr. Pigeon, oh, he's working on posting bail right now? Well, the uh, bail was re requested, uh, the judge uh, granted less than they, uh, than they asked for. Obviously, we indicated what our opinion was. Uh, it's being posted as we speak, uh, and he uh, will be walking out of that courtroom shortly. Would the potential sentences be concurrent so that that 15-year max is the most prison time you're fighting against? You know, I, it, for the most part, it, uh, it, it looks that way. I mean, I haven't really analyzed it. They just handed us the indictment, so I haven't had a chance to analyze it from that standpoint. But I never think about sentence. Uh, unless and until you have to, and I don't plan on having to. So and the AG's office we requested to have the nine counts read in court, the charges? No, well, the standard procedure is for the judge to ask if we waive a reading of the indictment, and the standard procedure is to waive a reading. We can read. Uh, you know, we don't need the judge to read it for us. You all can read. Uh, so what would be the purpose in doing that? <laughs> anything good, else you, good. We, we haven't seen the, I haven't seen the indictment. Are you able to elaborate at all on, on what it says and why you know you're uh, No, basically it? they indicated what the charges were uh, in there in an abbreviated fashion. I haven't read each of the counts. Um, we've discussed that uh, those were the areas that they were looking at, so we're kind of generally familiar with it. But no, I haven't read it yet. I will hear. Do you know if any law enforcement is still pursuing any uh, avenues of inquiry regarding any other matters? I have no basis to, uh, to say anything uh, like that, that I know of anything like that. Uh, today they made a statement that their investigation was concluded. 
and that they were ready to go forward. So take them at their word. Do you get a witness list now of the people that have been testifying <clears throat> before the grand jury? No, it doesn't work that way. Uh, unfortunately, in both the federal and the state side, uh, the only time that you get a witness list is during jury selection because then you read off names and ask potential jurors if they're familiar with the names. But there isn't any vehicle for us to force a witness list. I mean, it's pretty obvious to us uh, who the potential witnesses are here, so it's not a, not going to be a big mystery. Did Mr. Pigeon testify before the grand jury? No, there's no uh, purpose, in my opinion, as a defense lawyer, uh, for a defendant to ever go before a grand jury uh, because <clears throat> unlike the prosecution, we aren't allowed to question their witnesses. Uh, they would be allowed to question the defendant. Well, how, that's just not fair. Uh, and so if we could call witnesses, if we could cross-examine, we'd be glad to go before the grand jury. But otherwise, it, it's a one-sided uh, situation. Uh, and uh, to me, it's outlived its usefulness. Uh, it produces statements for us to look at at trial, as far as I'm concerned. Outside of Judge Michael, like, who do you think the potential witnesses are in this case? <clears throat> well, um, I, uh, the only other one identified in the indictment was uh, another attorney who they said was a receiver. Uh, and um, I'm not, uh, not exactly sure who that individual was, but it's whoever that receiver was. Uh, in that uh, particular case. Most of us were aware. They didn't identify him by name. Most of us pinpoint the origins of this investigation, uh, May 28th of last year. You mentioned in court today a year, the investigation's going on a year and a half. Were you aware of it? Was your client aware of an investigation prior to the execution of the search warrant? Yes, um, sure. There's been a, uh, you know, rumblings of an investigation for quite a long time. Um, so it's been at least a year and a half. And you said if he wanted to get out of town, he already he would have already. Oh, he clearly would have. There's no, believe me, he uh, he wants to be here and he wants to have this trial. So uh, there's no chance of him fleeing the jurisdiction, that's for sure. How's he earning a living? Well, you know what, we're beyond the charges now and I'm not going to get into his personal situation. The tax lien, was that 315 or 350? I'm Just sorry, the what? The tax lien, excuse me, against property. Is it 315 or 350? Oh, you know, I didn't even hear that. I mean, I heard her say something about a tax lien, but I didn't hear the number. Okay. Uh, that's that's being worked on. That's been, that's you know, he's been processing that with the IRS for a long time. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.